Hey okay, guys, well let's let's get to it. Unfortunately, uh, I have to get off by six ten or six fifteen. So I'm hoping. I can't imagine we need more time than that to to create our list. But if we do, you're welcome to uh, continue without me. I apologize for that. Um, I don't know. I've been thinking about the best way to do this. I think I think maybe the way to do it is just to create a laundry list and then we can sort it out and prioritize it. Yeah, I don't yeah. know however, how everybody else feels. I did get. Let me read. Uh, let me read you what Phil sent me. Phil said, "Peter, for this evening's discussion, broadband. I would like to see a significant contribution to CB fiber, fiber, a hundred thousand, which would be matched. This would cover the connection cost of approximately fifty percent of the underserved residences in Middlesex. Number two, he has new gear for the fire department. I had that on my list also." And number three, other than that, I suspect I can support pretty much anything that anyone else that the board identifies. Um, again, I don't, I don't think we're going to be picking and choosing tonight. I think we're going to create a rough list to start from and then work on it and have a public hearing and see what the public has to say. And then we'll, we'll fine tune it. The only thing I think we need to keep our eye on, and I keep saying it, I know, is uh, this match business with uh, CV fiber because I'd like to take advantage of that opportunity if we can. But other than that, there's no rush to do any of this, Dorinda, correct? No, we have uh, we have time to use it. Um gotta all be used by 2026. But um in regards to the CV fiber, um I think we should act on that sooner than later and not wait. Um, right. If we want to because take, I guess there's a limit to I, I think there's a limit to um, how much they're giving out. In terms of matching, yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, they posted something on Front Porch Forum just recently, uh, basically saying that the match is a first come, first serve. Um, I believe it was a million dollars that they had available for the match, and that they said that several municipalities have already taken them up on that offer. So, um, you know, as time goes on their, their ability to provide us or mm -hmm. other folks with match, you know, is decreased. So. Yeah. No, I read this. I read the same thing, Randy. Um, Dorinda, remind us what, what's the total, I know it's a little uncertain, but what's the total amount we expect to get in round numbers? When it's all done, 515,000 and some change. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know how everybody else feels, and I'm not trying to jump the gun, but I would suggest we give them 100,000. We can always give them we can always give them more later if we have more. But we've got what 160,000 or something. No, right. we've got we've got 250 right now. Okay, well let's give it to them. I say. Well, we don't have to we don't have to say that right now, but I I don't think it's a bad idea to maybe decide that tonight. I can't imagine. Uh, I can't, I mean, Phil certainly isn't going to object. He's subject, suggesting it and the rest of us are here. So. Do we, How uh, much do was we the fire attempt? department request to? Was that like 30? Well, it, was, it was somewhere between 13 and 20,000. So I would suggest just to be on the safe side and knowing that the price of everything seems to be going up like a skyrocket. We, we pencil in 20,000 for the time being and see what, uh, see what he comes up with. I'm going to build a spreadsheet right now. See how much we spent. <laughs> well, yeah, that, no, no, go, go right ahead. That'd be great. I mean, the other thing, the other thing that I think we should do, and I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to jinx the jinx the deal, but I think we should put money aside, some money aside in case we don't get this grant for the town hall. So we can mm -hmm. go ahead and uh, do that work. And I'm not suggesting that it's necessarily the same amount that we're doing the grant for, but it should be, uh, some sum of real money. What do you think, Liz? Maybe thirty thousand. Uh, yeah, I would say I think I, we're actually quite hopeful that we're going to get this grant. Just well, the way that they've been me, talking with all us. I'm, all I'm all I'm saying is, <laughs> yeah, I would say thirty. Here, that'll guarantee we get the grant, right? Right. <laughs> I mean, we're I not spending the money right away it. anyway. I'm just saying on our spreadsheet, plug it in. Do we have a sense from? Uh, CV Fiber, do you, does anybody know what their original ask from the town was? Their original ask was they wanted it all, Randy. 
What was that dollar value? I think they thought it was like 350. Is that, is that what we originally thought it was, Dorinda? I can't remember. This was I, way back. I think it was, <clears throat> I think it was in that vicinity. But all, all I'm saying is if we, if we do a hundred thousand now, and a year from now we have extra money or we haven't been able to spend it all or we think we should give them some more, we come sure they'll happily take more. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how everybody else feels. I just, I am really motivated to take advantage of that math. Yeah, and my, my knee jerk, quite honestly, was when I was thinking numbers in my head, it was it was a little above that 100, that 100,000. I was like at 125 in my head when I was, considering like what seemed reasonable. Um, but I, I didn't know what the ask was originally and how much uh, that contribution actually went towards uh, the installation. So it sounds like that might get us more than 50% at the- the thing, is, the thing that's a little fishy and unfortunately, who is, who is our representative now, Sarah? I got, an email, I got an email from the president of the CV Fiber Board saying our representatives had not been showing up. I don't know. Representative is David Lawrence, and I think we're still looking for a backup. We had, I have uh, a backup. Who is it? It's my neighbor, uh, Bruce. Um, Bruce, Bruce, uh, Bruce yeah. Stevenson? Um, Bruce yeah. Stevenson. I don't yeah. know if he's been formally appointed. Maybe he has. He has um, been. I would like him, he would like to be on it. And I said, I would okay. bring it up at a meeting. Why don't we put that on the May 3rd meeting? Be okay. Peter, be, if you could just slow down for a second. When you read, when you went through uh, Phil's email, uh, I, first of all, I need a copy of it, but you said if we provide $100,000, we get a match. That gets us 50% of what? He says, hold on, let me, let me read it. Just a little slower. Uh, I know, I'm a little wound up. I'm sorry, I've had a busy day. Okay. I'm back to full power after my trip. Watch out. Okay. Um, uh, Randy alluded to it too. I'm read the wrong thing here. A hundred thousand, which would be matched, that would cover the connection costs of approximately fifty percent of the un slash underserved residences in Middlesex. Okay. Thank you. Now, my understanding of this is, and it's been a little confusing, and I've been trying to read the CB Fiber stuff. But when I had the conversation with them back six months ago, it was clear that the town got no direct benefit from our contribution. So, yes, maybe that amount of money covers that. But what they explained to me then, unless they've changed their story, is that it's all just going in the pot. So, it reduces the amount of debt, but it doesn't offer any special deal for the town of Middlesex. Yes. So, uh, so I think that that was the message when all of this first was circulated. But with this ARPA money uh, being put in play, I believe the language has then changed and said that the monies that the town the towns give directly impact the town itself. So, well, there's a, I, I tried to read that three times, and every time I read it, I come back. I mean, they're trying to make it sound like that because they got a lot of push pushback. I'm not. I'm just not sure it's really true, and I haven't been at any of the board meetings or heard any of the discussion. But regardless, I think it's a good thing to do. And whether it's a hundred thousand or hundred and twenty-five thousand, we can always give them more later. But. I'm interested in other people's thoughts, but we're, we're getting, I'm putting the cart in front of the horse here. So what else have we got to- uh, The roads. <laughs> well, we, so Dorinda, I read all the same stuff that you've read. I know you went to the meeting, which I didn't, which I didn't attend, but you're satisfied that we can use any of this money for our own town infrastructure, meeting roads, buildings, yeah, so what they want you to, it's whatever is um, what they consider lost revenue or whatever. Um, I take it that we can use it for infrastructure. They talk about using it to winterize meeting spaces, to do all that type of stuff. Um, and so 
I think, and that brings me to not just the roads, but I think we need to do something in the interim to the town hall, um, be it a heating system. Um, we just spent 800 and some $900 on a septic. Hopefully that might carry us through um, on getting that repaired. Um, but I do think whether we sell the building or whatever we do with the building later on, I think these fixes still need to be done. And well, definitely, I, I couldn't agree more. We definitely need to have a heating system. We definitely need to have a functioning water system. The only, right. the only thing that, that I'd like to hold off on a little bit is, the, uh, is a new lift because who knows? I mean, yes, is it going to be advantage to a potential user of that building to have it be handicapped accessible? Maybe, but also maybe not. So, yeah. And but. there are grants for those for doing specific things like that. Um, I, and I would just, I want to add that based on our town plan and the energy plan that's associated with it, that we don't want to just jump to replacing the same old heating system. And I think we should still, if we're going to get this grant, we'll be able to see this stuff hopefully this summer um, to be able to know like the state of affairs um, for the town hall. Once Sarah has her chainsaw, she can go in the woods and cut wood. We can put some wood stoves in there. Well, that's, mean, right? that's an option. Um, but we could say, I, because I think also what we're going to, you know, we're going to be looking for, and I'm wondering, Dorinda, if you know the answer to this, is that, you know, if we're looking for grants to help us with actually rehabilitating the town hall can we use some of this money towards match for that okay yeah. so, so you that can use we it. may want to think about because we may need a big <coughs> lump sum for something like that it could be yeah. you know that we need a hundred thousand dollar match right. or something like that yeah you probably you definitely can use it for that but i do think there is um and not the lift so much but there's an immediate issue there i was down there the other day we had our three new listers in the office. We had the person from Nemrick. This is all in the bookkeeping side of the office. We had our bookkeeper and we had myself in there. So you had five people in there. The three listers were gathered around a desk, which is your standard office desk. And um, I think that we need to do something in the interim just to get us through down there. Um, so that was one thing I noticed that was on my list. And, yeah. um, well, but what is it that you're asking for? I'm sorry, more desk space? Well, just I think there is some remodeling down there okay. that needs to be done. Um, the windows upstairs are you know, it's like sitting there with a the window open. And if yeah. you're going to keep Sarah up there and anybody else, yeah, um, there's definitely the downstairs ones have been replaced, but it's the upstairs ones that haven't. Um, but that was just temporary. I have it down as temporary fixes to the building. Um, well, I think and, they, oh, go ahead, I'm sorry. No, so that was kind of where I was going with that one. The well, other thing, I mean, anything, anything that's going to, you know, presumably we're not going to bulldoze that building no matter what. So what it's going to come down to is, are we going to use the building? Or are we going to sell it to somebody else? Well, having decent windows in there, having a decent heating system in there, you know, whatever I think is only going to, I mean, we may not get it back dollar for dollar, but we'll certainly get a lot of it back. Um, the other, the other thought I've had for a long time and, you know, is we overall, you know, the upstairs now is not used for meetings. It's only what I call Sarah's auxiliary office. Well, could we set up a couple of more workstations up there? Sure we could. I mean, do we need to make sure the heat works? And like Dorinda says, it isn't like the, 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 the bridge, open bridge on the battleship in a North Atlantic storm up there. But there's quite a bit of, there's a lot of space up there that could be utilized. Now, whether we move the whole lister operation, I don't know how we would, I don't know how we would do it, but just give up the idea that other than the select board space, that we're going to have a meeting space in that building. But anyway, we can talk about that. But I, I agree putting some, I mean, I th don't get me wrong, guys. 
other other than spending a boatload of money on the roads, the other, and the other thing we haven't talked about is the town garage, which could certainly use some help. Um, you know, half a million bucks is a lot of money. We're gonna work. I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure, uh, I'm sure Victor and Shane could could spend every penny of it if we gave it to them. But I don't, I don't think that's what we really want to do either. I think this is a. I agree with Phil Scott. This is like a once in a lifetime opportunity to take care of some serious stuff that we really, uh, we really need. Okay. I added retention bonuses for the road crew. Didn't we talk about that? Like, or, you know, you know sign on bonuses. That, didn't we talk about using some of that money? Well, I think we had decided between um, the bookkeeper and the what we did in upping all the wages, it cost us about $50,000 to do that. So I think we've kind of already included what we've already done as money being spent towards that. So we can we can post date. Yes, like we, we can, can we can okay. go backwards. Yep. So yep. but do we want to consider, you know, since we're having a hard time hiring and people are, you know, basically moving on to different road crews where they're doing better bonuses in order to retain people, do we want to have some money set aside, you know, for that purpose? Like Callis is giving a two thousand dollars sign-on bonus for their road crew job that they have posted right now. Yes, yeah, Sarah. Um, I talked to the Callis, uh, one of the Callis town clerks today about that, and he said it's two thousand dollars spread over two years, just to give you wow. a, an, an oh, idea about that. Good. Yeah, that's not and so great. That's not so great. So just it's not like they give them a check when they walk through yeah. the door. Okay, good. I, I think most of them are like that, though, is where they give them a small piece up front, and then once they're on for a year or whatever, and they've stayed there, then they get yeah. referral fee type deal. Um, I know that most most places look at the, the second lump sum payment at a year, at the one year mark. Yeah, I agree, Randy. So you're saying, um, back to uh, Dorinda's uh, comment, you said that we probably already spent 50000 on the salary increases, the bonuses, and all the fringe and everything that is associated with that? We're making, we're making a little of that up, though, aren't we, Dorinda, because we're down a person on the road crew? We probably are, but that yeah. was, you know, that was kind of what we, when we did the math back when it was all happening, we right. figured it okay. to come in somewhere around the $50,000. I'll keep it in um, there. Yeah. And um, I spent yeah. 300 so far. Wow. Okay. <laughs> 300. How did we spend that already? 20,000 on the fire department uniforms, 100,000 on CB fiber, 30,000 for the town hall planning grant. 50000 for a town hall rehabilitation grant match, which might be 10%, remodeling the town hall with temporary fixes at 50000 and retention bonuses and salary increases at 50000 I think the temporary fixes at the town hall for 50000 might be more than what we really want to put into it, don't you? I have no idea. Things are so expensive now. I have now, no idea. Them. I know, I know. <laughs> well, the, the crapshoot is going to be the lift. Didn't we get an estimate last year that the lift was going to be twenty thousand right there? And if it was twenty thousand last year, it's probably twenty five or thirty thousand this year. You know, God bless you. That's nice of you to say last year. That was three years ago. It was twenty thousand dollars. <laughs> well, fifty thousand is probably a good well, place to start. Uh, right, and, but we and don't forget and don't forget the radon mediation. Mm -hmm. Hold on, guys. I still think we wait to see what we come up with so that we can, yes, we should fix these things, but we might not need to fix the elevator if right. we're selling the building, right? And right. there are grants specifically I, to I fix agree. elevators. I might not, you know, hopefully we get this grant and we don't have, we don't have to spend that money. I mean, right. we can always, I think the balancing item on all of this is going to be between what we put into the road, well, what we put into our buildings, what we put into the roads, and what we give to CP5. You know, that's, that's gonna, what's gonna bring us up to the half a million dollars. Yeah, the roads, if we add in 300, I've spent 500,000. Randy. 
Um, just, just bringing up the point that, you know, through this feasibility study that we're going to be doing on the town hall or this exploration study, whatever you want to call it. Um, one of the things that this money could be spent for if, if, if they decided to build a new building um, and just the discussions about losing our food shelf and whatnot, um, that this money uh, specifically calls out items like that or other, um, other pr services provided and, and the ability to spend money on building something for that uh, purpose. Um, so I don't think that it, it's necessarily, you know, we can paint the framework, so to speak, but I, I think that we need to keep things like that in mind that we might not know for another year. Right. And we have time and we have time. Yeah. The other thing, the other thing that keeps rattling around in the back of the uh, back of my mind, and I know I brought it up before is you know, one of the things we need to do early on in this town hall project, depending on, you know, where we go with the state police, who knows where, but to find out what the potential sales value of our existing town hall and fire station is. I mean, if that's, if that's 350 or 400,000 or who knows, who knows what it is, that'll build a damn nice town clerk's office wherever we want to build one. I would think that'd be part of this study, right, Liz? Yes, it is. Yeah. Yes, it definitely is. Um, so one thing, and I think, Dorinda, this it has changed since we first talked about it, um, because one of my ideas, too, was to um, donate some amount of it, ten, twenty thousand, 20000 to the Middlesex Community Fund, which gives out grants to people who, you know, apply for any kind of reason, right? Like they might need assistance with some pain for something that they can't get as a benefit someplace else like heat or something like that um and uh or it could be you know something like i think the energy fair is a applied for like a few hundred dollars to you know provide a prize or something like that at the energy fair so i'm wondering if we because we don't have the you know specific auditing that we thought we were going to have, we could put it to the Middlesex Community Fund, which was built specifically during the time of COVID to help community members in need. And that way, you know, we could have a nice balance there to be able to support our townspeople who may have a need. It can't go into our funds. We'd have to give it to if it's its own organization. It's its own organization. It's yeah. a 501c3. It, Right. So we is, that's one of the stipulations. You can't um, put this away for a rainy okay. day. Um, so, but you can be creative with this. So if you have, um, say, $30,000 sitting in your town hall building fund, you could spend $30,000 out of this money for something else, take the money out of the, you know, use the money that's in that building fund and it still would remain the same. It wouldn't be like you're funding that. So, you know, you just would be replacing the money. It's not like you would be docking it away. So there's a potential to move funds around if we needed to use funds from one thing to another. Um, because there is other thing, I, I'll give you what couple things that I thought of not only the turnout gear for the fire department. They're talking about air packs and they came to us two years ago about a new rescue vehicle. And looking at the capital spending plan, they don't have um, the vehicle being purchased, I think for another, um, I think three or four years, which I don't know if our current one is gonna hold up that long or not. Well, it's, going cost, it's going to cost a fortune to maintain it if we keep it on the road for that many years. Right. Yeah. So I'm wondering if we should, you know, start looking at where we have placed this the funding for the capital spending plan and see if there's an urgency that should be dealt with sooner while we have the money, as opposed to, you know, just funding it each year. And then that gives us 
that gives us the, you know, the opportunity to start building that fund. Right. I agree with that. Cause if we, if you were able to purchase it now with this money, which there is a provision for, um, for safety services, including the purchase of, of vehicles. You're breaking up. You're breaking up, Randy. And yeah. you could basically start. You're all broken up. Well, what I the other thing I like about it, and I I was thinking about the air packs, but but you're right, Dorinda. Those air packs are going to be a big deal when they come up, and we we've been hoping there was going to be grant money to pay for those, but maybe this is the time just to say, hey, this is the time to do it. And the other thing I like about it is when we're bringing the fire department along into this merger mode to show them some real financial dis support from this with a rescue vehicle and air packs or whatever it is, I think would go a long way towards uh, making them feel pretty good about the town of Middlesex and being part of the town of Middlesex, hopefully. Yeah. Would so, you like to know how much I've spent yeah. now? Yep. 800,000. <laughs> Time to start cutting. <laughs> Time to cut our budget. <laughs> I've got my, where are they? I got them right here. I'm ready. <laughs> Well, the roads I put in is 300. So if we cut those out, we will have spent the full 500. Well, don't forget, we still have fund balances. So, you know, it's um, there is money that's socked away for future stuff. So how much is um, in our fund kind balance? Of offsets a few things. Well, between all the funds, we got yeah. 462,000. Oh, that's not bad. No, um, but okay. um, so those that was a couple things, the air packs, the vehicle and the turnout gear for the fire department. Um, the other thing was, I still think we need to pursue some the um, equipment to hold meetings. Um, what no matter how we do it, I don't think Orca probably. I mean, that's good for select boards, but I don't think that's going to take care of our other um budget committee or um you know the planning commission anything like that they're not going to want to be attending all those meetings so and you're not talking a ton of money there you're probably only talking a couple thousand three thousand maybe i don't know i was thinking i was thinking four thousand but yeah i think you're in the right range and i think we should do that yeah i think we need to be set up to to do that it's interesting so Everybody's been saying these hybrid meetings are a nightmare. Well, guess what? I attended a hybrid rotary meeting yesterday where there were probably 18 people in person and six people zooming in. It worked fine. And they didn't make what, what they did was they had the, the people who were there in sort of a horseshoe arrangement. And they had the camera way back, so they didn't zero right in on whoever was talking. But for that number, it worked fine. There was no problem at all. So that encouraged me to think that we could potentially do some kind of hybrid thing and have it and have it work without having it be a nightmare. And uh, you know, the, the the key is the people who are who are dialing in just have to respect be respectful when they interrupt the meeting because it's hard to expect somebody to be sitting there looking at the screen when somebody's frantically waving their hand. But I'm just telling you, I was, I was pleasantly surprised how it worked. And they didn't have an owl, which was, you know, peering around at the individuals that were talking or anything like that. So I don't know. I, what I'm saying is I agree, Dorinda. I like Dorinda's what? idea of yeah. looking at the capital plan um, yeah. and identifying something that seems, you know, sort of, a, a big purchase that we're always like, are we going to pay for it kind of thing without. Well, those two things for the fire department, the rescue, the rescue truck and the, uh, yeah. and the air packs. I was, I actually somehow don't ask me how I probably clicked when I should have clacked one night when I was half asleep, but I'm on this, this uh, site where they keep showing me all the used fire equipment that's for sale. <laughs> You can buy a, no. You can buy a pretty nice used 
rescue truck, which I think would meet our needs for like twenty five or thirty thousand dollars. I mean, really nice. Is it seven or eight years old with twenty thousand miles on it? Yeah, but that'd be perfect for us. Oh, good. I can cut a hundred thousand out of the budget. I put it in at one hundred and twenty five. No, no, no. It definitely doesn't. No. Yeah. <laughs> Liz. Yeah. Uh, seems how you're you're the only one that can see all of your numbers, and you're just kind of putting some figures in there, and I don't yeah. know where all these figures are coming from. My head. Um, yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, <laughs> a couple of comments. I, You guys kind of went through everything. I, I did have one other item I'll bring up in a minute, but one of the things, before we spend any of this money, we do have to have public hearings, correct? I don't think we have think to, so. but I think we should have. It's, okay. It's not mandatory. So, so on my my point is this. Uh, I do agree with Randy. I had put down 125000 on that on that uh, CV fiber thing. But if we find out, I think we need to find out if that's exactly the way it's been interpreted, that, that the money would be spent in Middlesex if they did that match. I think we should do that right away if we don't have to and then and then have the public hearing on the rest of the money that we don't spend yeah i i agree with that i i want to be i want to be clear about that i think that amount of money is definitely going to be spent in middlesex but it isn't like because they have our money to spend in middlesex that our middlesex rate payers are going to pay lower rates now there is talk and help me out here randy there was talk of of hookup costs that we could potentially cover hookup costs. I so I think that I think that this ARPA money did drive that conversation about the spending in the town that was was pushing the money to CV fiber. And what I did read was that the the less money that they have to borrow to essentially get the the service to the folks in town. That they the would receive rate. a reduced uh, service fee. Yeah. So I oh, think this I never this would directly I never this saw would directly that. impact I that the, the overall service fees maybe would be reduced, but not specifically for the town. My understanding is that the the town residents would see a reduced fee. Huh? I could be wrong. Oh. Can I say something? I just said that I did think that the, the town residents would receive a reduced uh, service fee the more money the town gives, but I could be wrong. But we should be able to, you know, I would think with a phone call we could, or a email, we could, we could get that clarified before we gave the money. Like yeah. maybe this, maybe this week we could have, we could have Sarah, uh, reach out as our assistant and get the answer to that question. Then we can make a decision at our board meeting next week, which is practically tomorrow. <laughs> just a thought. I just like to be sure <clears throat> before we write the big check, I'd like to be sure we know what we're, what we're doing and what we're getting if for no other reason. So we can justify it to our residents. Um, hello. Yeah. I'm just looking at the spending plan. The estimated replace the year for the rest of you this year with a 2023 marker of 140,000. Liz, I can't hear you. You're, yeah. you're awful hear you choppy. Right now. Can you hear me now? Uh, uh, something with your mic. Can you hear me? Broken up. Now, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so I'm looking at the capital spending plan, and it has the rescue truck as a replacement year of 2022, and in the budget for 2023 at 140000 in the capital spending plan budget. So it is in there, Dorinda, but it's... Um, it, and I'm looking at a live, you know, like a Google Doc. Was that the rescue truck? It says or... rescue from 1986. Hmm. 
but I wouldn't think it'd be 140,000. Well, that's what the number that the fire department gave Christian. I mean, I he's. Think I think that's a brand new. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, tell you, I would be amazed if we had to spend half that amount of money. All right, I, I'm, I'm going to put that in the comment. Because for the most part, we have all the equipment that needs to go in that truck. What we need is a new truck to put the equipment in. I mean, we've got the radios, the lights, the whatever the rescue equipment okay. is. We've got it. So it's basically it's basically a pickup truck with a van body on the back of it so it can carry. Okay, I added that to the comment. I'm not going to take out 140,000, but we should. Um, what about the town hall, not town hall, what about the um, town shed? How much money have you got left? We could spend it all. I don't, I don't have anything left. I've already spent it all, but um, I'm just looking at. I think what we, I think what we need to do, and uh, John Ray oh, has told me a couple of times he would do it. He, he has ideas on how to make significant energy improvements to that building without costing a fortune. And he thinks that idea that, you know, you can't reinforce the structure of the building so you can add insulation is a, is a falsehood. You know, that, yeah. that engineering report we got two years ago. Yeah. Who, well, who did the that next five years? Report? The next five years for the town shed show overhead doors at the current year, current price of 11000 and a roof at the current price of 20000 Can't why, why, why does it need a why does it need a new roof? Doesn't it need just a paint the roof? I don't know. Um, I don't know the answer. The replacement know. schedule is forty years, and it says ready for replacement is right now. Well, you got to remember the life expectancy of that building was twenty five years. The whole, the whole thing. Oh, replacement. So, listen, if we don't look at a capital spending plan and make up our own ideas, there's no listen, point I'm in not, us even losing no, no, it. I'm not I'm, I truly, I understand, but I'm just, I'm just saying, you know, like putting in that rescue truck for $140,000. I think that's crazy. What, what needs to be done to the town hall building is, is beyond what I know, but I, I respect uh, John Rahill and his experience and expertise. And I know he has ideas and if he has ideas, other people will probably have ideas about how the, how that building can be significantly improved and made so, made so it will last a reasonable period of time. I mean, we had people suggesting, Randy, uh, you know, air to air heat exchangers. So we got the humidity out of the building. So that solved mold problem. You know, I mean, yeah. But all I'm saying is we need to have some money in there for that, uh, for that building. Yep. And I don't know what the amount is. Okay, well, so far we spent a lot. But you put in you put in three hundred thousand for the roads? Yeah. <laughs> at at the end of the day, it feels like this exercise, you could have you could have a million and a half dollars on that list. And this is just a wish list, if you will. And we're gonna right. we're gonna prioritize right. this and and you know definitely focus on broadband, I think on the front end, but then as we, as we move on, we can evaluate. And this is, this is just a brainstorming exercise. So Absolutely. I'm not worried about having a million and a half dollars on there to right. start. I mean, as I, hold on a minute, Sarah, as I said, you know, we could spend this half million dollars and another half million dollars on the road and not have any the roads and not have anything for anything else. So yes, Sarah. Um, isn't, isn't there an infrastructure bill that's giving us a lot of, that's setting a lot of money down, down the pipe to, for roads? We don't know. Everybody keeps talking about that, but we don't know. So yes, that's, but by the time I presume, by the time we have to make final decisions on that money, that either will have happened or it won't have happened. One or the other. Well, I thought it was, um, we just, I just heard about it on the radio that it's coming like now, this Monday yeah. starting to come now for roads. Well, I haven't, I haven't seen anything that says the town of Middlesex is going to get X dollars. No, 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 not Middlesex. Is what, they're, what they're allocating statewide, but I didn't see it broken out. So that's all I'm saying. We don't know. 
But I mean, we could get 100,000. Who knows? Yeah. Steve. Peter, um, uh, as far as the town town garage, I, I know we we need a new town garage, but I just put twenty five thousand in there um, because I know one of the things that they do need is new heating system in there. They need new heaters, and so I, I mean, I put twenty five thousand in there. It isn't a lot of money, but I mean, we could spend all the money we got between the town hall and the town garage so we've got to right. put some stuff in there but so i just put a small amount in there but uh, we do need to have something in there the other thing that i had with regard to the town garage is hiring somebody to build the build the cover for our uh, diesel tank and getting that project completed yep because i'm afraid we're never gonna with our yep. resources and the way we're going we're never going to be able to do it ourselves right um, I don't think that's a big number. What did we? Where did we think that was? Eight or ten thousand dollars, Max. Yeah, ten. It shouldn't be ten, but so so put in uh, thirty-five or forty thousand dollars total for the for the town garage. That would cover building that roof over the over the fuel tank and and doing something with the heat. Hey, can I just ask a question? I'm also looking at the capital spending plan. There's a boiler here that says it costs 20 years with a 20 year lifespan, but there's actually no number in the rest of the spreadsheet to say when the replacement year is. But you're saying it's now? It's now. It it says, yeah, it says 2032, Liz. Um, oh, is, that, is it all the way at the end? Well, no. So if you look at E22, on um, are you talking town hall or the uh town no hall? i'm in the i'm in the town shed e15 e boiler yeah so no he didn't put a he didn't, he didn't put, put a thing in there. in there so that's ready for replacement now i'm going to add that right now it is yeah it isn't, it isn't a boiler i mean i don't know what it's going to be but it's likely not a boiler no right but now, it's called a boiler that it's, it's probably a it's probably a, a hot air system it is okay i'm going to write hot air system but there's a place, you know. All right. The fuel tank says 8,500. Is that the actual fuel tank itself? No. No, it's a roof over it. Roof. Protected. Yeah, no, but I, I think I, this is the fuel tank, not the roof. That is the fuel tank, Liz, that's in the capital improvement plan. Okay. So we really need a fuel tank roof as well. Yeah, because the fuel tank isn't slated to be replaced until 2033. Right. Okay. So I better add in um, the fuel tank roof. Yeah, yeah. And you say that that's 10,000? Yes. You guys are really spending a lot of money right now. I'm, I'm really confused, Liz. You're uh -huh. saying that you're added the cost for a fuel tank, but the fuel tank doesn't need to be pay, replaced until 2033 or something. I'm confused what's going on. You're talking about the spending plan, Sarah, to replace it in 2033. Okay. Fuel tank, oh, but there's nothing about a fuel last tank. Year. It's just that Liz is going back and forth between the capital spending plan, in which, right. which you, right. I'm getting confused. So I'm after sorry. maybe it, if you guys can just set aside five minutes at the end of the meeting to just methodically yeah. read through the list. Yes. Yes. Uh, and can also, I get a go ahead. Go ahead, I just want to get a clarification on this. We had said we were turning the maintenance of the capital spending plan over to the budget committee. So are we just making these notes for our reference? Because there's nothing being relayed to the budget committee that this is what we're doing. You know, or are we going to relate to them that we're making these suggested um, things? But so no, I, I put it in, Dorinda, because this is a live document that they'll see. And I'm somebody who has access to making changes to it. Like there's a few of us that can go in and make changes to it. And because it's such a brand new document that, you know, these are, in my mind, corrections or clarifications that weren't. I'm not going to start adding in these things into the town hall plan. Like, these are real things that somehow got missed. Like, I'm not going to start putting in, you know. You shouldn't be you shouldn't be changing anything on the capital spending plan at all. Not right. Yet. Not yet. Nothing. 
This should be just but, a working document this, within the select board. Exactly. Just brainstorming. Yeah, no, no, no. I know I'm not. This, this, uh, there are two different things I'm doing here. It's okay. No, uh, I'll let Elias know what I'm done. <laughs> and Randy knows too. I mean, the, the, the challenge with all this, guys, is, you know, we don't know what road money's coming. We don't know if we're going to get this grant for the town hall. I mean, there are a lot of there are a lot of unknowns in this. So, you know, if all the if all the cards line up correctly, uh, we could have a lot more money. But as I said before, I really think the the balancing number in this is going to be if we give more money to CV fiber or we spend it on our roads. And I have a pretty good feeling after this spring that if we ask our citizens what we should spend it on they're going to say spend it on the roads but we'll see and broadband yes but, but i mean if we're we're dividing it up between giving more money to uh more money to uh more money to cv fiber versus the roads i think I would I would bet our citizens would want to give it to the roads. Mr. Weed, good evening. Good evening. Can you hear me okay? Yes, we can. Do you have any any questions or anything you'd like to add to this discussion? Uh, I just want to put a plug into uh, fixing the roads 100%. The fiber thing's happening from what I'm reading, regardless of this money and I don't know. I mean, I view, probably you guys have this all laid out, but the arteries of this town, East Hill, Center Road, Brook Road, and Molly Supel. I mean, it, I just came East Hill for the first time. You know, all we keep doing is throwing sharp rocks and holes, and we got dirt up against the trees. I mean, it's just, it's, this town is you got to fix the roads, the arteries, not playing around on side roads. Fix the arteries first, then we'll be free to work on the side roads. I know everybody wow. has a state, but wow. Well, and, believe, and, me, believe me, we hear you. I go, I go over East Hill every day, and I know what you're talking about. The the, the unknown, and I'm not sure. I, I saw you pop in, and I, weren't, I wasn't sure whether you heard the earlier part of this conversation where there supposedly, or not supposedly, there is, a big pot of money coming down for the state specifically for the roads so you know, until we know what that is we can't make any decision but certainly this is the time and i think everyone agrees this is the time to try and spend a good chunk of money on uh on the road so we hear you loud and clear believe me okay do you guys agree those are the arteries of the town yes uh -huh. We're on life support right now. <laughs> it's bad. You got to stop throwing sharp rocks and holes. It makes no sense. Well, we were in, as, as you know, and you you experienced it like like we all did. But we were in, a, in the emergency mode this summer. Now we, I mean, this winter or this spring. Now we've got to figure out figure out where we go. But the one decision we did make, which is why that dirt is in the trees, is that we're not going to grade that powdery mucky slate back into the roads like we have in recent years we're going to scoop it up and get it out of there because that's that's part of the problem that what's left of that slate is just a, yeah. it's a nightmare in the summer when yeah. the it's a nightmare when it thaws out in the spring yeah. yeah not not to interrupt you aaron and and we all do agree with you but we don't need to talk about the road so much and what's wrong with them but Getting back to our list here, I'm just just saying we're trying to trying to do a, a, a list of items that this ARPA money could be used for, and and uh, we've all agreed that the town roads need money. Copy that. Okay. Well, thank you. If you if you have anything else to add, raise your hand or jump up and down or something, and we'll we'll recognize it. Um, is there anything that anybody can think of that we've missed? We've created quite a laundry list, not, not saying that we've, uh, 
we've set the amounts, but I think we've created the created the laundry list in terms of town equipment. I think all our town equipment, unless I'm wrong, is is pretty much on the list to be replaced when it needs to be replaced. I know we've talked about the excavator. That's all on the capital spending plan, I believe, Liz. Yeah. The excavator, yeah. the bucket loader. Yes, Randy. So you, the excavator is a topic of conversation because I understand that there's quite a few repairs that might potentially need to be taken place there. And uh, from a budget committee's viewpoint, um, I'm wondering if this is further out in the uh, in in the replacement plan than we might be willing to swallow when a, a ten to fifteen thousand dollar bill comes for um, for the bottom side of that excavator, knowing that we're going to re try to replace it. And I think it was two or three years. I think it's um, I think it's two. Yeah. So. You know, my understanding in talking with, with Victor and Shane a little bit over the past eight months or whatever is that, um, you know, that's a pretty serious question on their minds anyway, as, as you know, is, is dumping $15,000 into a, a machine that I think they were valuing at 25000 or something like that for a trade-in value. Right. Uh, and you probably know more than I do, Steve, but, um, you know, I've heard bits and pieces of that conversation. And, and I think it's something that, that we as a, as a board and the, uh, the budget committee should probably be looking at and what the options are, because we all know how the equipment fares lately. And we don't, we don't, we're not on the good side of, of the, the side of good luck there. So. Um, let's see. I'll also add that right now our interest rates are, are pretty good. They're starting to go up. I've seen increases. Um, so, I mean, it might be something we really want to think about sooner than later, too, at that. Um, not that I want to see the town go into a bunch of debt service, but um, if you're going to do it in two years, you might be better off doing it within another year and get a better interest rate. Well, and the, and the question is, you know, you said it exactly right, Dorinda, if, if, we, can, if we can still get the good interest rate, typically, typically we don't go out and buy town equipment for, for cash. So the question is whether we want to use our ARPA money for that or whether we want to take a 10 year note or whatever we need to do to buy, a, buy an excavator. I also think the, what, what I heard, the conversation I heard was that it would be better to have a smaller excavator rather than a big excavator, that it'd be more useful. So maybe it won't be quite as expensive, but I agree. It's a good thing to, uh, it's a good thing to look at. I mean, it is, it is a killer that you put a, you know, you put new, uh, basically new underpinnings under that excavator and spend $15,000 and it doesn't increase the value of the excavator by half that amount of money. I've, I've done those kind of things myself many times. I know how it goes. It's not good. What else? So, so Liz, I would, I would put a note in there about the excavator. That we think it's going to cost a lot. How much we want to put in? What do you think, Steve, Randy? 135. For a small small excavator. I don't know. You mean for a brand new excavator? Yeah, I mean, if you're talking about a brand new excavator, they're they're you know that size is probably in that in that price range. And yeah, up, yeah, probably up towards one fifty. But I thought, aren't I aren't I right that there was discussion that it would be more useful to have a smaller excavator? And higher out when we needed a big excavator. I don't well, know. One seventy. I don't think the excavator we have is oversized. I just they were talking about not getting a bigger one, doing any bigger work with, you know, like we can't reach down over some of these banks and get into the brook when it's down there ten or twelve feet. You can't, you right. can't get there with right. that excavator. So, right. 
This is showing on the capital spending plan 170k in 2024. That's with trade in. 200, 200 without. Oh, right. So it is expensive. And it's going to be only more expensive. <clears throat> Don't forget, we bought this one as a used uh, used piece of equipment. It wasn't brand new when we bought this one. Right. I don't know that we necessarily, I don't know if we want to put these things in that are, are like, I mean, all these things that are in our capital spending plan. I mean, I saw what we're I mean, I sort of no, like I, we're looking at and adding them in. I think, I think just I, making I a think note. Here's, that, the, here's the thing again. Things that we would, I'll use the excavator as an example. That's a normal piece of equipment, which we're going to replace and use and replace and use just like we do our heavy trucks. Yeah. yeah. I, I view this ARPA money as a as a chance to take care of some one time. I hate to say once in a lifetime, but it'll probably be once in my lifetime for sure. Type expenditures. I mean, if we're planning for a new excavator, just like a new ten wheel truck or a new grader yeah. or whatever it is, we can buy that uh, through our normal through our normal operating process. So I hate to I hate to. Uh, spend this our money on those expenditures but I, I think it's good to put them on there and then we can then we can weed them out but yeah. i just you know to put a to put a, a substantial amount of money into the roads now which we wouldn't be able to do especially when we're doing this paving project and other things um that's exactly the kind of thing that i think we should be using this money for and you know money for the town hall absolutely money for the money for those things for the fire department absolutely um but things like things like a new excavator or a new this a new that i i think those are sort of built into our regular ongoing operating expenses and yes i agree with the rent if we can we can borrow the money now cheaper we might we might want to do it because everything i read and see is the interest rates are going to be it'll take a while to to filter down to the town type money but they were talking I think I think they were to the Fed was talking like a three quarter of a point uh, interest rate increase potentially next week, and that's huge. I mean, that hasn't happened in forever. So, well, yeah. and, that, and let's you know, let's not forget that you know some of this stuff is going to take a year or more to even get. So we order something that's going to be, you know, twelve to eighteen months before we even see whatever it is that we're we're getting. So. Um, I, I mean, I view this process as throwing everything on the, on the chalkboard and then kind of scoring, you know, giving higher priorities to the impact to the town residents, um, and whatnot, you know, so that's, that's the job that I see in front of us is throw everything up on the board and then, you know, sit back and kind of score everything with thinking about how it impacts the town residents the most. Yep. I agree. So let's, uh, it's six o'clock. Unfortunately, I have to leave in 15 minutes. Are we, are we ready to come up with our, our revised master list to give uh, Sarah, Liz? Yeah, I mean, I've just been typing in and making notes. Um, right now we have, a, including the $300,000 and the $170,000 for an excavator, we have a $924,000 budget. Well, I would rec I would recommend we whack the whack the excavator out of there. I mean, I think that's one of our normal normal operating expenses. And uh, you have three hundred that hold hold on a minute, Aaron. We have three hundred thousand in for the roads. Yeah. Uh, we can leave that in there for the time being for for a plug number. I mean the 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 crapshoot in this is whether you know how much road money we're going to get from the state if we get a gigantic chunk of money from the state we may not need all of that not okay. that we can use it and if we get the grant for the town hall i mean that's that's going to get us right down where we uh where we want to be aaron you had a comment aaron uh i just wanted to chime in on the uh on excavator, I don't know how many hours it gets a year. You know, this is, I'm sure is a different topic altogether, but 
15 grand is cheap money compared to a new excavator. And that thing sits probably 10 and a half months out of the year, maybe 11 months out of the year. And you buy a new one, you're getting all the new tier four crap. It's going to give us problems down the line. Just like our trucks. I know. Yeah. I know. <sighs> we're, we're, not, we're not buying excavators right, right off the bat. Yes, Sarah. Could Liz just read through the list that yeah. really slowly? Yes. Okay, the first thing on the list is CV fiber. And that's, that's 100,000? Yeah, 100,000. Okay. The fire department turnout gear at 20,000. Town hall planning study. If we don't get the VCDP grant, we'd make it 30,000. What about the air packs for the fire department? I haven't gotten there yet. Oh, all right. Okay. All right. Keep Nothing's going. in order. There's nothing in any logical order. I'm sorry. Um, town hall rehabilitation grant match possibility. I threw in 50,000. Or just in general, we could have grant matches because we know lots of grants are coming out. Um, remodeling the town hall with temporary fixes at 50,000. Did we just say remodeling, not temporary fixes? I mean, they're not temporary fixes. If we put a new heating system in, that's not a temporary fix. Okay. Um, retention bonuses and salary increases that we already paid for, for 50K. Um, Roads, mud mitigation, 300K, with a note that the Build Back Better funds will probably cover the majority of the cost, or may cover all the cost. Um, air packs at 65,000, that's per the capital spending plan, what they have in there. And Peter's version of a rescue vehicle at 25K. <laughs> Versus the 140K that's in the The economy <laughs> rescue vehicle. <laughs> the no frills net rescue vehicle. Um, let's see. Uh, I wrote for the Middlesex Community Fund to give to town groups requesting funding and townspeople in need, 25,000. It's a 10. Well, I increased it, because I have my fingers on the- Because your eyes. fingers on the button. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, we can always, we don't want to cut. Where's the, number? Where's the number for the select board retreat? <laughs> right, Air, I already said AirPacks, rescue vehicle, oh, we already said that, a remote meeting equipment, 4,000. And town garage repairs, 25K for new heating system and 10K for a roof for the fuel tank, equaling 35K. And that total right now comes to a lot. <laughs> Let me see. <laughs> Equal sum. Ooh, expensive. Seven fifty four. That's not bad. Did I do that right? It's about think, right. It's yeah, seven fifty four. Right. That's I think that's a good start. Me too. 
Thank you. Well, I'm back finally. <laughs> Steve's on his phone. <laughs> Hi, Steve. <laughs> that's that's because of our beautiful broadband. Yeah. That's right. Hi. So, Steve, what what we've got, and I don't know, I don't know when you get when you came back in. Uh, Liz just went down through our list, and we're at seven fifty four right now with yeah. fifty thousand for town garage repairs, three hundred thousand for the roads, a hundred thousand for CP fiber, and all the yeah. other things we've talked about. So I, I mean, think I think that's a pretty good place to be right now. I mean, if we if we get the town hall grant and we get a good chunk of money from the state for the roads, we're going to be on easy street. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was I was wondering if if that list could be distributed to the select board so that it's we can look at it. It'll be in the minutes, Steve. It's in the minutes, and I'll send the minutes out tomorrow. Oh, okay. The other thing I was wondering is, uh, and I don't have a current uh, thing for, for our fund balance. <clears throat> I know Dorinda brought it up originally, and, and I think that would be a good thing to be able to look at, too. Well, what our yeah. town fund balance is about 150, right, Dorinda? No, she said the rest of all our other no, funds. No, in, funds in, in our in our funds themselves are that we right. pack That's away what for yeah. for those. Um, we have 462, but a lot some of those don't apply to us being able to use like. Um, the right. restoration fund is not going to apply here. The town forest fund isn't going to apply here. I mean, I can give you the numbers for the ones that would apply, but um, these are numbers that were kind no, of, right. you know, yeah. yeah. I mean, I can give them, yeah, I can send those out, no problem. I haven't, this was All as right. of March. We haven't gotten April's yet. Yeah. Right. right. I, okay. I, just, I just want to point out, you know, that includes things like the paving fund, the bridge fund, you know. That's right. right. Exactly. And we're, so building up, did... we're building up those funds for other things. We can use, we can use and have used in the past money from those funds to cover cash flow shortfalls, but not to cover, uh, not to cover real money shortfalls. And to the paving fund, there's 259000 in that fund. And of that, we have the center road project that's going to eat up over, is going to eat up, um, I think, a couple hundred there. So yes, easy. Um, easy. So you're really talking that's going to be knocked down by a couple hundred thousand. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, good. So the truth sort of. Wait, can I just ask a question for my greater understanding? The true sort of fund balance in terms of less fund, meaning like non-allocated non funds, yeah, is what, like more like 160, you said? Uh, I'd have to go back. Um, I mean, that's always a moving target. Um, I would have to go back and... Because depending where we come in at year end, like we're overspent for this budget year, I would assume we're going to be. So I would have to take um, what the audit came up with and then back out what I think we're going to be short this year to come up with something. Because that it? money, that includes like taxes we haven't collected yet. It's a hard number to come up with like that, you know. Yeah. I would, I would tell you... I, I would tell you, I believe at the end of last year, the mm -hmm. number was like 140. I mean, I, I could be wrong. This is just popping into my head, like 147,000. We certainly yeah. are going to lose money this year, so it could easily be 100,000. Right. I mean, it isn't five, in the place, Keith. There, there isn't a lot of extra money sitting there. And like Peter said, we use it to as cash flow. Yeah. Okay. Look, I'm, um, I'm sorry. I, I really have to. Uh, I really have to go. You're welcome to continue the meeting and the and the discussion. I I apologize for this, but I think we're pretty much pretty much there. But I'm gonna I'm gonna jump off, and I'll look forward to seeing your comments in the uh, in the minutes. Okay. And we got, we've got our board meeting next week. Don't forget every week. Here what? we go. Hey. Um before you go, 
let me just ask you something. I'm going to put the CV fiber allocation on the on the agenda for Tuesday. Does yeah. that make sense? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Now, Sarah, when are you leaving? Well, I hope to leave Monday. I'm still waiting for COVID tests. I was at a conference in there. It was a super spreader event. Yeah, you said that. Uh, but I mean, we have a plan. We have a plan in place to cover our select board. Dorinda's, Dorinda's going to. Uh, she's going to control the meeting, and uh, you guys can just record the meeting on on Zoom, and I'll do the minutes. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Have a good trip. Hope I get. Hope I get to go. Is this your book, another book tour, Sarah? Oh, I'm going to visit Anna in, in Poland. Oh, right. Poland. Okay. Fun. Be sure you dodge any missiles you see coming in. Would you yeah, play? let's not joke about that. I'm not joking. I know. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. I've got to go. Have a good All right, evening. Bye, Peter. Yep, bye bye. Okay. Is there anything else you want to talk about? I don't think so. Not Hello? from my end, anyway. No. I don't want to talk about like anything else. I think what Peter said, we pretty much covered it, right? And if you yeah. think of anything else, you can shoot me, like, we just, like, oh, remember when we talked about at the select board meeting <laughs> that we forgot? Um, yeah. I'll add it to the spreadsheet if you want to shoot me an email and I'll just put it on my little spreadsheet. Okay. Okay. Bye, everybody. Have a good night. All right. Thanks All right. for coming in. Bye. Bye.